Day 23 of the pilgrimage, I hung out in Red Lodge for a little while and I ended up talking to this guy on a BMW 1200 GS who was also doing the moto vagabond thing, as he called it. It was really weird to talk to him knowing that I, you know, I broke down multiple times, I got stuck in circle for a week waiting for parts, you know, and like just talking to this guy on the BMW and the worst thing that ever happened to him was that he got stuck in some mud. Yeah. <laughs> In May 2016, I made a decision to quit my job and hit the road for two and a half months. In total, I did 6,700 miles. I was gone for 70 days. This was my pilgrimage. I left Red Lodge in the afternoon, just when the wind started to pick up. And like, just to know that Beartooth Highway, the all-American road, the thing that everybody wants to ride, is gorgeous. Just wow. But a high wind picked up and was very, very stressful on that little road. Like, little, little road. <laughs> it didn't help that there were mega motorhomes traveling and decided that they needed to be halfway in my lane. So this is one of the only photo stops I took because the bike was not liking all of the hill climbing business. Also, I had to stop the wind from pushing the bike over while trying to take this picture. <laughs> I entered Yellowstone and kept a wary eye on the dark clouds that had been taunting me all day. I did get to see some bison, which was super cool, including a big bull that called the pavement a good resting spot for 10 minutes. I exited Yellowstone around 5 p.m. and I had a very false impression that the storm was going to pass me. By the time that I got to Carson Springs, the wind had picked up and made it almost impossible for me to go more than 50. 10 minutes later, the rain came in buckets, and you know how much I love the rain. Before I could even think about stopping to put rain gear on, I was soaked. So being very cold and wet and sore wasn't welcome at all. On another note, at the height of tourist season, it is almost impossible to find a place to camp or stay around Livingston and Bozeman unless you booked ahead. I didn't. Every RV park and campground that I stopped at was full. And then I drove into Livingston, and at this point it was 8.30 p.m. and I had more than a few attendants at RV parks and hotels tell me that Bozeman was raining and that it would be raining there again very soon. Oh, thanks. I couldn't tell by the giant dark storm clouds. So I made an executive decision that not breaking my rules wasn't worth getting sick or to sacrifice the chance to feel a lot better after a very stressful day. So I broke my no hotel rule for the second time uh, in 23 days of the pilgrimage, the second time after 46 in days in total of being on the road. It felt super crappy to have to give up that goal, but I wouldn't go back and I wouldn't change it because of how much better I felt after having a shower and sleeping in a real bed and not waking up five times during the night because I was freezing my ass off. Also, shout out to the best grandmother in the world for making it possible for me to stay at a hotel in the most ridiculously expensive town. Day 24 of the pilgrimage, I left Livingston in much higher spirits. No regrets about the hotel whatsoever. I don't care what you guys think about me. <laughs> I took Frontage Road towards Bozeman and I got to stop at the Montana Grizzly Encounter and watch two of their amazing bears play around in the enclosure. It was pretty incredible. Uh, they are big and fluffy and adorable and terrifying. I greatly appreciate the size of these creatures um, and it was a little bit easier to appreciate that size when there isn't glass between you and them. I wish the weather had been a little bit better so I could have sat around and drew those gorgeous animals all day, but it started to sprinkle a little bit and I had to find a sneaky way to get into Bozeman since Frontage Road ends there at the Grizzly Place. And so I ended up finding one of the most awesome windy roads. It's called Jackson Creek Road and it connects Frontage Road to Highway 86. I wandered around Bozeman for a minute before I finally discovered the location of the Museum of the Rockies. Probably would have been a lot easier to find if I could have used GPS, but it, you know, 
I only had to ask three people before I found it. <laughs> they had an awesome exhibit about life in the cities that surrounded Mount Vesuvius before it erupted, plus one of the more impressive collections of dinosaur skeletons that I've witnessed in Montana. Also, a life in Montana during the 1940s exhibit, which was also pretty neat. I left Bozeman around 5 p.m. when the museum closed. The road going into Castle Mountains is rough dirt, and the majority of the property on either side of the road is private including the land that Castletown, or what remains of it, sits on. I got to take a moment and look at the two remaining buildings and appreciate that at one point in history, Calamity Jane owned a restaurant there, and that's pretty freaking cool. I continued on with the intentions of camping in the National Forest on top of the mountain. As I tackled the Forest Service Road, I started to realize that there wasn't really anywhere I could logically camp and not get the bike stuck in the mud in the process. It was funner than hell though. Lazarus and I missed the mountain roads a lot. I could tell because I was basically on an empty tank since leaving Castletown. By the time I reached the other side of the range where the developed campground is, it began to pour again, so I opted to camp in White Silver Springs instead. After going 25 miles on empty through the Castle Mountains, because Lazarus is a bamf. <laughs> Once I got to White Silver Springs, it was kind of dark, and I lucked out and I found an awesome BMB. And despite everything being wet, my spirits were so much better than the day before. Mountains make everything better. This is the part of the trip where I got really bad at, at vlogging. Um, I hit a little bit of a travel depression, so talking to the camera was not something that I really wanted to do. <laughs> so, voiceover from the future. P.S. I have so many bruises on my legs, you would think that I'm a kickboxer.